Good morning everybody, welcome back to the channel, hope you are doing well. It's a really nice morning here, the sun is trying to break out the clouds up there as you can see. And it would be really nice if it does, and it's just a gorgeous sky up there, look at that. So lovely. Welcome back for another little chat. Um, I hope you are all doing well. I'm going to talk a wee bit um, when I'm out in this walk about inner child wounds and healing. Just show you my wee loons there. She is enjoying her walk, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so um, this is a difficult subject for a lot of people. You know, it's a hard subject to navigate for a lot of people. But if you do the work and you get started on it, it will totally change your life. So, um, you know, things that we've faced in our childhood can be very difficult, very hard to deal with, and can be very hard to navigate. You know, and those difficulties, if they're not addressed or healed, they tend to follow you into adulthood, unfortunately, and it can cause a lot of problems. But you know what? It's never too late to start healing. And um, even though it might be hard to move forward, you know, begin that journey today. Start that healing journey. You won't regret it. It will totally change your life. Now, so inner healing for those who maybe haven't heard of the concept before, it's a type of therapy. Now, you can either do it as a self-therapy, and I'll um, give you some guidance on that, or you can get help from a therapist to help you do inner healing as well. Um, so the main focus of it is to focus around emotional, psychological, and sometimes it might be physical problems that we've had dealt with in our childhood that we've not been able to heal or recover from and they're affecting our day-to-day -day lives now as adults. And um, usually it's a result of something that we experienced as a child or it could have been over a lot of problems prolonged period of time as a child where your needs just weren't met you know and sometimes this can be through dysfunctional families you know addictive maybe parents who have had addictions or poverty you know abuse in the household there's a lot of different things you know or even it could be you could have had good parents but sometimes people do things unknowingly and it's caused us in some way to feel unsafe um, in our environment as a child. I can feel the warmth of that sun now and it's absolutely lovely on my face. It's amazing how the sunshine just instantly makes you, gives you a lovely sense of well-being. Now, the first thing we want to do when we're doing inner healing work is we want to create a safe space so that we can start to look into it. So whether that's a safe space in your home or, you know, some little place that you have, maybe a little outdoor shack or something, or even, even with a therapist, a safe space so that we can start to look at this work and you feel comfortable, you feel safe, you feel secure in this environment. And the reason for this is so that we can be quiet and still and let that inner voice start to speak out. Let that child that you were have the voice that it didn't have when it was a child. 
So we're going to start to listen to that inner child. And what we're going to do now is you are be going to become the advocate for that child. You are going to be the one as an adult to listen to that child that wasn't listened to or needed that support. And that's the beginning to start to heal it. And this helps us form habits and coping strategies. You know, things that might have held us back from ourselves. And once we start to do this work, we're going to integrate that inner child with the adult again. And that will bring us back to our authentic self the person that we were always meant to be. And it's great work. It's not easy work, but it's great work. And what we're going to focus on is getting to the root of the problems, allowing the space and the freedom to start listening to the inner voice, getting to the root of it or the heart of it and starting to understand where you might have felt safe, what happened, and how now you as an adult can be there for that child. So you might want to think of it as you're going on a journey, but you're going on a journey of the self. And it, once you start to take that journey, it lead to a huge amount of personal growth and stability. And even though some things might come up that are hard, emotional, don't be frightened. You've got to remember that it's part of the healing process. The other thing that healing inner child work can do as well is break generational trauma. If you come from a family in generations where there might have been substance abuses, traumatic experiences that have come down through the generation, doing this work will start to break those patterns so that your family will go on to live much healthier lives in the future. You won't be repeating those patterns over and over. It will also empower you to take back control of your life. You'll feel much more connected to yourself and others. And you will create your safety for yourself. And you will give stability to yourself. And it's amazing when you give that to the child then it automatically comes back to you. Now, so if you have experienced or are experiencing difficulty forming and maintaining relationships, a difficulty expressing your emotions and how you feel, if you have fear of abandonment issues, um, if your self-esteem is low, your self-worth is low, you have a poor self-image, if you have negative thinking, negative behaviour patterns, these are all signs that you need to do inner healing. Your inner child needs attention. So preparing yourself is the first step. You know, treating yourself with compassion, love and care listening to your feelings as they arise and setting healthy boundaries so that you can start to do this work. And as I said earlier, create that safe space that is just for you to do the work and you want to make clear boundaries so that when you're in this space, it is just for you and it's your time to start to do the work. And this is what we call 
you now showing up for yourself. You're now showing up for that child that no one showed up for in the past. This is what you're starting to do, okay? Now, there are other things you can do, like affirmations. They can be quite good. So if you're starting to do the work, emotions are coming up that are, you know, making you feel a bit nervous, a feel a bit anxious, a bit frightened. It's okay. You're going to go in and out of periods like this. It's normal. It's nothing to be afraid of. And you can have some affirmations ready. You can make some little cards and just place them around or put stuff on your walls at home or in this safe space if you need to go into it. And you can write things on it like, I trust myself, I'm capable, I am loved, I am safe, I'm showing up for myself. So you can do this daily and you can put them wherever you need to, you know, so that when you feel those feelings of fear or anxiety or feeling a bit scared, you can go to these affirmations and give yourself positive reinforcement that you're doing the right thing and you're going to get through it. So practice self-compassion, practice love, forgiveness of yourself. Now, forgiveness of others is a sticky topic with me. If you feel you can forgive others, forgive them. If you feel you're not ready, then do not feel guilty about it and don't get hung up on it. Take your time. Sometimes, depending on the situation, it can take us a long time to get to forgive others. So don't get too hung up on that. But if you feel you can, then yeah, go ahead and do. You know, and by doing this work, you'll release, start to release shame, start to release guilt, start to release resentments, angers. And that will be you then heading down the road of healing and growing and you will completely transform. You know, before you know it, sometimes when we begin at first, it's hard and you think, oh God, I'm not getting anywhere, but you are. Sometimes it takes the body a little while and the brain to catch up when we start to do something different and we start to think in different ways. So it's a gradual process. And you will start to notice that you're starting to feel better, even when you're going through difficult emotions. And remember, we all deserve to be happy. Everybody deserves to be happy, have joy in their life, have love in their life, and be fulfilled. So you can, there's some like exercises you can do while you're in your safe space, when you've created that space for yourself. Journaling is fantastic. Put down your emotions, write down your thoughts, write down the type of day you've had, and then you can go back and look at them and see where you were. And it's a good way to track your progress. Write down anything that's coming up from your past. Write down anything you want. Just anything that comes into your mind, just put it down. You know, you might think, oh, it's not even relevant, but you'd be amazed that when you go back to look at it, how relevant it actually is. And the more you do it, the more then stuff will start to come up. And sometimes something might come up that you go, oh my goodness, where did that come from? And that's what you want to see. That's when you know you're on the right track. Um, exercise is very good as well while you're on this journey. You can, you know, do things like yoga if you're into it, mindfulness techniques, swimming is a very good thing, hiking, walking, getting out in nature. You might find that if you're out walking, things will come to you. So you could bring your journal with you. And if you're out walking and stuff and things come to mind, jot them down. Um, you could also take part in things like art, music therapy, very good ways to bring up emotions and deal with emotions in a very gentle way. You know, um, sometimes talking therapies can be a bit triggering and sometimes can overwhelm you. So art, music therapy is a very gentle way of bringing things up. 
nurture relationships that you have with supportive people, tell them what you're doing, what you trust them, so that they can be supportive, you know, when you're going through this period of healing. Tell your friends and stuff. If you feel like you need to attend support groups, there are support groups out there. You know, sometimes, sometimes depending on what type of person you are, you might want to do it in solitude. And other times you might feel better if you have other people who are going through the same thing and you can discuss things together, your different experiences. And they can have different techniques and things that they use that might be helpful as well. Other things like um, taking nice baths with essential oils, aromatherapy. These are all really nice things to use in that safe space. You know, incense if you like that. Just create a lovely space for yourself where you feel safe and comfortable. So I hope that's been helpful. Let me know in the comments anything else that you want to know that I haven't covered. It's hard to cover everything in a 15 minute, 20 minute video. But if there's any other things that you want to know about, just drop me a comment and I'll answer it in the best way I can, all right? And start today, start to get that work done today. It's the best thing that you could ever do for yourself. It'll totally transform your life, you know, and um, you'll break free from the things that have been holding you back, okay? So I'm encouraging you all, and until the next time, take care from me and my lovely girl. Ta-ta.